Hello everybody and welcome to the premiere episode of Motoring 88, a program about what else? Cars. That was back in the year 1987, shooting the first episode of what was to be a show about cars and the people who drive them, and it was called Motoring. Well, here I am, 35 years and almost 900 episodes later, I'm still standing and we're still on TSN. As Paul McCartney once said, life went by in a flash. And ain't that the truth? Well, recently we actually got most everyone together from the Motoring TV family under one roof, which is rare. And needless to say, lots of reminiscing. And we thought we would share some of those memories with you this week on a one hour special. And you know, there are a lot of viewers, many watching right now that weren't even born when Motoring TV first came to air. So you might see some things that you missed. And also, we're gonna have a very important announcement at the end of the show. So stick around. Let's get things started now. Paul, roll the tape. As Dorothy once said in The Wizard of Oz, we're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. Well, that rings true for Motoring TV this week as we find ourselves a long way from home in the Kingdom of Bahrain in the Arabian Gulf. Well, this week we're in Whistler, British Columbia. Beautiful yes, warm no. You're looking at the inner harbor of Victoria on Vancouver Island. We take you to Detroit City, Valencia, Spain and snow has not been in the forecast, they tell me, in almost 100 years. We are at the Ford Proving Ground in Romeo, Michigan this week. Hello, everybody. But here in Moab, Utah, it is simply Jeep country. Well, this week, we're in the beautiful Nova Scotia town of Antigonish. Since it is Toronto in the center of the universe, it is known as the Canadian International Auto Show. We're at East River Speedway, just outside of Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, and you're watching Maritime Stock Car Racing. And as you can see, there is plenty of snow at Jasper National. National Park in Alberta. The beautiful city of Geneva, Switzerland. Munich, Germany. Calgary, Alberta. And there is nothing quiet about New York City. We find ourselves in Russia's far east region of Kamchatka. He's only about a couple of feet away from the white line. Well, I call SUVs stupid, useless vehicles because there's nothing in an SUV that a station wagon doesn't do better, cheaper, and more fuel efficiently. Joining me for this special edition of Motoring 91, a couple of our regulars. Graham Fletcher, of course, is behind the wheel each week on Test Drive, and Jim Kenzie has come out of Kenzie's Corner. My pickup truck's uh, getting a little bit on the rusty side, and uh, no amount of duct tape's going to fix this baby anymore. When I get in this vehicle, you know how I feel? A little nerdy. Feeling nothing more than. This car goes zero to 60 miles an hour in just under 11 seconds. Now, a good eight year old on a tricycle could do it in about 12.5. <laughs> Those who don't get it or don't like it never will, and that's fine with us. And these buses are 44 feet long and eight and a half feet wide. Those cones are only 10 and a half feet wide. So you don't have to be a mathematician to figure out that you don't have a lot of room for error. Just, just getting out of, of a house is, is huge. Having your own way of getting out is, is probably the main point of that. You can release it from the inside. What is happening? What's going on? Every now and again, we'd see a family show up with a kid living with disability. So uh, we came up with this idea to make a, a cart that was, has hand control. But if you can learn the language, you can take the terror out of talking to your mechanic. But you don't have to get a, one of those thingamajigs and slide under the car and adjust the whatchamacallit. You can just ask the car just about anything just by saying, hey, Mercedes. How can I help you? Tell me a joke. Sorry, my engineers were Germans. How about that? I don't know if, if it's easier to be in the front or in the, in the back, you know, they had to increase the speed a little bit more and when you do this turning and so on. Jeez, you ain't come out of there, girl. <laughs> <laughs> this is not graceful television. Karen, where's Brad gone? He's still in Germany. He's in Germany, still in Germany? Yeah. Driving those fancy cars? Yeah. On the Autobahn? That's what he does. Well, we're getting dirty fixing his truck here. Brad's not gonna like this invoice. A cab driver 
can be one of the first people that somebody new to the city might meet. Hey, Brad, ask me what the most important thing in comedy is. What's the most important? Timing. We can't afford teleprompters on this show, so I have to write my notes in pen. More later on, Kenzie's Corner, still going nowhere. The tank is full, the engine's humming, those wide open roads are beckoning. So sit back and get ready for Motoring 88. Welcome to Motoring 88, a weekly program about what else? Cars. I can't really do much to help you out of this kind of a mess, but over the next half hour, you will learn a little more about the kind of car you're driving and we'll show you what's new on the road. So buckle up, stay tuned. On Auto Opinion, we'll find out what the new cars are made of. Whoa, the brakes work. <laughs> Saving lives on the racetrack, a job for professionals. Why do people always kick tires? I don't know, I guess it looks good on TV. And our resident expert, Jerry the Mechanic, tackles tires. It's opinions, classic cars, tech talk, performance, the love affair. A direct line to a driving audience. Be part of it. Motoring 88. Now, as you notice, Phil Godin was the host of the Motoring TV pilot. He soon became the voice of Motoring TV and still one of my best buddies. As for Jerry the Mechanic, we met him at a technical school great guy but who could resist Bill Gardner who would soon become Canada's number one and most loved mechanic. All right we've just got started as we continue to bring you our one hour special as we take a trip down memory lane. Motoring TV is brought to you in part by Stark Auto Sales. Everybody's looking for deals and with us this is really the better way to buy a car. They'll get a good car much cheaper than they'll get anywhere else. Stark Auto Sales, a better way to buy a car. Motoring TV is brought to you in part by WeatherTech. For the ultimate protection for your car, truck, or SUV, go to weathertech.ca because nothing protects like WeatherTech. Welcome to Test Drive, and each week on Test Drive, our expert Graham Fletcher is going to put 1988 automobiles through their paces, and then he's going to rate them on his weekly scoreboard. Now, for some odd reason, he's asked me to meet him out here in the country, which seems like a strange place to test a car. Do you hear something? Welcome to Motoring 88. Thanks, Brad. Now, I know you're testing cars each week, but even I know this is not a car. No, that's right. This is one of the latest 4x4s. Some that would pass muster, some that were pretty good, and some that were very good. I mean, the Lada Sagona will never, ever go away. Closer examination reveals a very different story. The entire rear light cluster had been installed at an angle, and the rear valance looked ready to drop off. One of the corners already broken. The Kia Sportage was absolutely dreadful. The first one that we we road tested, I'm weaving down the driveway, or down the road, and the back wheel's coming off the ground. And if you lifted the back seat up, I could put my hand into the gas tank. I mean, this is absolute junk. This thing, even when in gear, has got more play in it than most manual boxes have in neutral. Instead of shifting through a nice, crisp gate, it's like stirring a pot of stew. I hate to make light of it, but it really is laughable. You fast forward to today, much, much better, and it's much closer spectrum too. It ranges from good to excellent, and that's it. There aren't really no bad cars left. That was a fast 200 kilometers an hour. Good job we're all private property. <laughs> but what I did find really interesting, looking back on it, was when we first started, there were carburetted cars. Then came this really 
a rudimentary thing called fuel injection. Well, since then it's gone on. We've now got uh, GDI or direct injection. Then we got into the hybrids and the plug-in hybrids and now we're into electrics. So we've gone full spectrum from when we started to when we finished, we've gone from a carburetted larder to a fully electric Porsche Taycan Turbo S. Time to play. And in between there, there's roughly 850 road tests. Come on, Graham, it's time for test drive. Already? It's back in the early years, you ha I had to be chaperoned and had my, my hand held. Well, once again, it's time for test drive. And once again, guess who's late? That's right, Graham. But you know he does this on purpose. He's a bit of a show off. He likes to make a grand entrance. I wonder when he's going to show up this week. Guess who's here? Well, now, I think of a Lincoln Continental. I think of that big wheel on the trunk. And I didn't see one. Now, not only is it missing, but also this is the first front wheel drive Lincoln they've ever produced. I don't think of them as workmates anymore. I think of them as friends. Um, Any time. You know, a lot of people will look back over five or eight or 12 years and think, what a fabulous career I had. I'm looking back 34 years and thinking, what a fabulous career I had. This week's test drive features a truly unique vehicle. Now, not since the demise of Morris Garages has the motoring world seen anything quite like this. This is the 1990 Mazda MX-5 Miata. Now this, the skid pad, seems like a very good place to start. I often wondered, what would it be like being an avid golfer and being paid to play golf? I always wanted to test cars, and I get paid to test cars. Life doesn't get any better. Mom, Dad, <laughs> I always want wanted to fly. I'm signing away my life. Well, good luck, man. See you, Dad. It's been nice, OK? Now, unbelievable, unbelievable. He said it was going three times as fast as an F-15. It was just, my stomach was up about here, right in my throat. Now, Behind the Wheel with Charlie Goodman. 35.6, that's a pretty decent run. You know what, I think we should celebrate. I'm just gonna have myself an ounce of scotch here and uh, I'll see you back here in 15 minutes. Thirty-six, three, you say? Well, I'll tell you, after the next drink, I'm going to be a disaster. I got to tell you something, folks. Don't drink it, right? This is awful. It really is. All these things we've looked at this week are preventive maintenance. We're trying to catch problems before they develop into costly repairs. Oh yeah, I had a big mop of hair, yeah. Yeah, I do remember that. Um, and 55 takes for everything, right? If you have an older car where that system has gone into failure and you're about to empty your wallet to repair it, think twice because I can tell you you're gonna spend a lot of money resurrecting those old systems and you may never get them right. Till next week, I'm Bill Gardner for Motoring 90. One. <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember that exactly. Uh, when you phoned the shop and receptionist took the call and then passed it over to me, and yeah, yeah, I remember that whole deal, Brett. I do, and uh, yeah, it really changed things. It kicked open a lot of doors for me, right? Um, doors opened for me with sponsors that we've had on the show, uh, with engineers at, at car manufacturers telling me things that they would have never told me if it wasn't for the connection with the show. So yeah, it opened a whole lot of doors and I'm here to tell you TV pays a hell of a lot better than beating rusty ball joints out of a, an old pickup truck, right?
You know, along with cars, fitness is the big craze out here in Southern California. And with that in mind, there's a rumor going on out here that our own Bill Gardner is producing a fitness video for mechanics. I don't believe it, so let's just squash the rumor. Get back to business and join Bill in the shop. 97, 98, 99, 100. <clears throat> no, it's true, Brad. I really am working on that fitness video for mechanics. You know, there's a real void there. There isn't a single good workout video available for mechanics, and we've got to work so darn many hours, we don't have a chance to go to the gym. So I thought I'd develop something you could do in the shop, you know, at lunch hour, pumping a bit of iron with the car. No, I'm just kidding you. The interaction with my customers, a lot of them allowed me to use their car for the shoot, allowed me to take it back, the car that I'd fixed on Wednesday for them, they'd give it back to me on Saturday so I could recreate the scenario. Because a lot of those shoots were with actual customers' cars that I'd fixed. But by the time they're fixed, you know, you guys are in Germany doing a, a Mercedes shoot, and then we're shooting 10 days later out at my shop. So I would recreate a lot of those scenarios. I'd save the used parts, right? And we'd, we'd either show them beside the vehicle, or in some cases actually put the failed part back in to recreate the scenario. And my customers were great, you know, in terms of understanding and, and giving me the latitude to do that. Our motoring tip of the week concerns locking steering columns. This is one of the very few uh, remedies that I can actually give over the phone. And I actually did that the other day with a customer. She suggested that I use this as the motoring tip of the week. Here's the deal. If you've got a locking steering column and, it, and the key goes into the column itself, in some cases, if you've got it turned extreme left or right, the steering can bind up against the key mechanism. There's a deadbolt in the steering column and a rack and pinion gear that actually causes that deadbolt to engage and disengage to lock the steering. If there's pressure on it, and there is pressure when it's turned extreme left or right, it can bind up the key. Here's the trick. Just take the steering wheel, move it gently, and turn the key gently, wiggle it, and turn the steering wheel gently, and it'll free up. Don't force the issue. If you force the key, you can actually break the key in some cases if you use enough force. But just wiggle it around, wiggle the key and the steering wheel together, and it'll free up. It's only a problem at extreme left or right if you're parked close to center with the steering wheel close to center, not an issue. But if you've just wound yourself into a tight parking space, you can run into this problem with the locking steering column. Just play around with it a bit, it'll unlock if you're gentle. That's your motoring tip of the week. I've been at intersections in the summertime with the side window open and head guys out the side of another car in a multi-lane road yell across what's the tip of the week so yeah it it it's yeah it's, that's pretty cool three to seven hundred dollars isn't uh out of the ordinary for one of these sensors they can be pretty pricey until next week i'm bill gardner for motoring 2000. what what's the matter that was probably what? one of the best you've done in well, Get best out. first takes first takes that's why they call first me one take bill Wow. Didn't you see the Actra Awards the other day and they were... Best performance by an auto mechanic in a TV show. There is only one, so the award goes to... Everybody that was involved was, was really good, you know? They were, I mean, Graham is so good at what he does, and you know, all the guys are really good at what they do, so it's a no-brainer. It's a polymer coating that you put on the glass, and it's a really great thing. You just put it on and then buff it off until it completely disappears. And in the rain or snow, it's just amazing to drive the car. Your visibility is fantastic. <coughs> Water just beads right off it. You can see through it perfect. Yeah, it was a ton of fun. I mean, yeah, it, I don't regret anything uh, about, about the whole experience. It was absolutely a ton of fun. If we're paying a buck fifty a liter for gas instead of fifty cents, pickup trucks would disappear overnight. Frankly, it can't happen soon enough for me. What'd you say about pickup trucks, Bob? Oh, uh, oh, nothing, Bill. Uh, I'm Jim Kenzie. Oh, yeah. Was it that tough on him? Motoring TV is brought to you in part by Stark Auto Sales. You take the exact same car that I have that's a theft recovery and find a duplicate on the dealer's lot, I guarantee you that you will get it much cheaper from here, and which obviously makes it the better way to buy a car. Stark Auto Sales.
a better way to buy a car. Motoring TV is brought to you in part by WeatherTech. Help secure your cargo with CargoTech. A super grippy underside ensures your goods remain stable. Find out more at weathertech.ca because nothing protects like WeatherTech. In the 20 years I've been very lucky, I've had no scary moments with the exception of one. And that was when we were shooting a Volvo S60. We're very close to the end of the shoot when all of a sudden this little girl, her father kicks this soccer ball down a hill. Well, it bounces down the curb and then it hits the curb and goes at right angles into the road. So this little girl's running down the sidewalk makes a right angle right into the road, right in front of me. And I hit the brakes and steered away from her. And at the end of it, you could see where her pant leg had just touched the corner of the bumper. And it was the scariest thing I've done ever during test drive. Hi, I'm Rob Wells. And I'm John Paul Tremblay. Over the last 10 years, we've been really busy writing and shooting Trailer Park Boys and a bunch of other projects, and we never got a chance to do something we've always dreamt of doing. Yeah, rally racing, but this year we had a bit of a window, so we contacted that guy from Motorin. What's his, uh, what's his name again? Uh, Brad, isn't it? No, I think it's Brian. Brian Dime. Big fan of his. Huge fans. Anyway, we told him we wanted to race the Target Newfoundland, wanted to see what he could do, if he could set it up, and... He did a good job, he set everything up. Somehow he pulled it all together, he got us a brand new Porsche Cayman S, it's crazy fast, handles like it's on rails. And so we're gonna hit the rock, 2,000 grueling kilometers of no sleep, unfortunately no drinking, they have breathalyzers, just a lot of racing. Friends and family think we're a little nuts. A couple of them said, you know, they're scared, we might even die. Yeah, right. <laughs> Not gonna happen. So I hope you already went to the liquor store because you're about to join us for the next hour on the rock. Got a feeling it's gonna get pretty crazy. Yeah, they're okay. Well, you know, I've never been to a nudist resort before, but I figured, well, when it comes to dress, it has to be, well, pretty straightforward. Hi, sir. How can I help you today? Oh, I'm here for the car show. Well, I'm going to have to ask you to put some clothes on. But I thought this was a nudist resort. Well, it's a non-nudist event today. Boy, am I embarrassed. Luckily, I brought along a shirt and a pair of pants, and you know what? This shirt is just perfect for this occasion. Rolling. It's easy to start something. First of all, when we embarked on um, this journey, we, we had no idea how long it would go. Uh, but here we are, 30 some odd years later, and we're still friends. We didn't kill each other, right? Graham, for instance, I've worked with Graham, oh my gosh, for so many times. And we have our own private um, arrangements that we make and, and, all, and, and jokes. And at times, I find it difficult to even hold on to the camera. I'm laughing so hard. <laughs> Deep, deep, deep. They're nice legs. What's the matter with them? <laughs> Sorry, mate. Yeah. You yeah. weren't running on all of that. <laughs> you lie. The other thing is the gear lever. This thing has got more play when it's in gear than most manual transmissions have when they're new neutral. The new, 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 new neutral. <laughs> it's a show about cars and the people who drive them. And the one thing I think about is the cars, while they, you know, they change every year and they're wonderful but it's the people that bring the significance to the cars, right? It's the interaction, you know, the relationship I've had um, with the host, you know. Um, the, uh, yes, we travel around the world, but there's some things you just can't buy. And, and the guys make coming to work every day um, interesting, you know. They just make it, it's, it's a real pleasurable experience, and you, you just can't buy that. Hi, 
I knew about motoring TV, and of course, we'd see each other on events. And more than once, because I was never shy, I'd say to you, you really need to have me on this show. And to your credit, you, you'd, you'd always say, nope, I got my guys, they've been with me forever, and you know, who knows what the future will bring, but no. I think Han is right in saying that the minivan market is probably bottomed and it may be half of what it used to be, but uh, that half is still a sizable chunk of business. And I think the one that really turned the tide was we were doing a minivan. Can you say something about a minivan that would sound interesting? And off the top of my head, I said, okay, and I stood there and I went, minivans, practical vehicle. There's a certain time in your life when you gotta have one. You hate having it, but it's like you gotta have it. You know, it's like a vasectomy. You don't want kids anymore, you better get one. It wasn't that much long after that that you said, you know what, I'd, I'd like you to start doing some bits for it. I say this partly in frustration because I had seven years at Toronto Star in the wheel section, okay? The truck rider, all right? 1.1 million circulation on a given Saturday. Nobody reads bylines. So nobody knew who I was and nobody knew what I did, but I got on one motoring episode and suddenly anywhere I went, it goes, hey, you're that guy. And I'm like, yeah, I'm the guy, you know. They don't know exactly what you mean, but I guess I'm the guy, right? Okay, so follow me, but let's be quiet. We're looking for a T-Rex. Oh, oh. Oh my God, would you look at the size of that thing? We gotta have fun. What's the point of being in this business if we're not gonna have fun? Because on our, in our day-to-day -day lives, we've got our struggles and our, our issues and the things that we all have to deal with. Uh, but when we got out on the road, uh, we just, we, we had fun. You guys had fun and I never went on a motoring shoot where I didn't have a good time. So, that's it for this show. Until yeah, next time. Dad, Dad, are you hey. shooting motoring TV here? Yeah, motoring, so, yes. Can you ask Brad if he's finally ready to hire someone who's not ancient so we can get some young blood on the show? Go away or, or you'll be ancient in a second. Oh. Go away. Okay, so that's it for this show. Until next time, come back and watch people doing something about something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, that's it for this show, but remember to come back next time where we'll be doing more stories about trucks and the people who drive them. I've been coming here for 30 years and in this show, because it's in America, you know they have European shows too, but because it's in America, America really has become the, and was for years the home of the production automobile. But this show represents the style, the class, the, the ambiance of the of all cars, European, American. I sort of had an idea, so I talked to you about this idea after a couple of drinks up there in Montreal one night. Like you always say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta understand, that's, that's Brad Diamond from We're Never Doing That. Yeah, 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 call me. Anyhow, it turns out we did do this. The uh, segment developed as it went along and then it ended up with being, you know, classic cars and stuff like that, were, which to be honest, were a lot more fun. Like, cause you know, the new cars, Graham does them, everybody, everybody does them. I knew she could do it. <laughs> it brings out something when you see something like that uh, original RX-7 or the, the Toyota Celica or, or, or any of those older cars. Um, it, was really, it was really a fun time. This test drive is not about a car. It's about a person, a person that's been hanging around motoring TV for as long as I can remember. Everybody, I want you to meet George. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Very simple, okay? What I want you to do is look into the camera and I want you to tell the folks at home what you've been bugging me to do for as long as I can remember. Uh, drive this stock car. Drive for stock. Well, today, George, guess what? It's gonna happen. Because oh, this is the two minute test ride, or in this case, the two minute test ride with George. Yeah, that one's, uh, that was gonna be tough to talk about, but uh, yeah, George, he, he was a great guy. Always came and helped us, and every time I saw George first, it was, can we get in a go-kart? Oh, I wanna go in a stock car, this, that, and the other. And so he got to ride with it, but he was still bugging us about driving.
So, but George actually got to drive, and I think he was 54 at the time, right? And he had never driven a thing. Can you imagine, like, even the people at home, can you imagine not driving until 54? To get him to be able to do that and see him go out and, and drive around, that one tugged at the strings a bit. Uh, that one did for sure. How was that? Awesome. <laughs> oh, awesome, yes. Man. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. Awesome. Gary, awesome driving. Great Love job. the driving. Yeah, good man. job. Great on. Wow, uh, I feel good driving around. It's the first time I feel good. It's like winning a gold medal. One of the questions I get asked most frequently is how can I choose a car that's going to be safe? Well, that's not an easy thing to do. First of all, all cars sold in Canada have to have passed the same safety standards. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you're rolling on that. Do you roll on that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do it again. Uh, to give you some idea of just how smooth the Infinity's engine is, there you have it. A Luniazzi balanced on a running engine. Now, there's not too many vehicles. Son of a Stand up! Stand up! Anytime. Our Midas tip of the week concerns what to do when your alternator or charging system fails. What do you do? I am the lead editor. Uh, the best way I can describe that is I sit in a big dark room behind a big computer and it's my job to put the show together, to put all the stories together. And it's been an absolute pleasure to work with these people who are top-notch professionals. I watched Motoring TV in 1988. I was nine years old at the time. I'm 42 now, so that gives you an idea of how long the show's been on the air. Before I started with Bradford Productions. I worked at Hockey Night in Canada, and before we started our ship in Hockey Night in Canada, we would watch Motoring TV would be on all the TVs because everybody wanted to see what cars were coming out. If I had to choose a favorite story, it would be uh, Russ's RX3. Uh, there was a lot of production value put into that one. The car sounded so good, such a unique vehicle. It was that was a lot of fun to work on. Absolutely wonderful memories at motoring. Spent uh, some really good years of my life here. I know a lot more about cars now than when I started. We all know that seatbelts are law in Canada, but in many of Ford Canada's 1990 models, there will be an additional safety device in the event of a collision. And to prove the point, they've brought in a heavyweight spokesperson. There you are. <laughs> They're called airbags. Surprisingly, the use of seatbelts is not law in all states. But by September, all 1990 cars in the U.S. must be equipped with airbags or automatic shoulder belts. Motoring TV is brought to you in part by Stark Auto Sales. Everybody's looking for deals, and with us, this is really the better way to buy a car. They'll get a good car much cheaper than they'll get anywhere else. Auto Sales, a better way to buy a car. Motoring TV is brought to you in part by WeatherTech. The cup phone allows you to keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. Check it out at weathertech.ca because nothing protects like WeatherTech. What we have here is the battery tray. This is uh, composed of 32 6 volt deep cycle type batteries. Uh, the entire battery tray weighs uh, 2,800 pounds. Uh, we now raise the battery tray up and it fits in four sockets in the vehicle where it is uh, secured. Electric vehicles are the way of the future, uh, non-emission, very low in pollution, uh, very quiet. They're actually uh, less costly to maintain. I think you'll see considerably more electric vehicles, yes. Kenzie's Corner with Jim Kenzie. A friend of mine told me he was driving to work one morning at his normal 135 kilometers an hour. He had a Mahler Symphony on the compact disc and he was dictating to a secretary on his dictaphone and 
All of a sudden, his radar detector went full red alert, and he buried the anti-lock electronic brakes, and as he was screeching to a halt, the phone rang. Now, all these electronic devices can add very much to the convenience of, of your automobile, although personally, I draw the line at in-car fax. But the only, the on, excuse me, the, uh, yes, we'll take a note on that. The, the only concern I have with, with all these things is that, excuse me, hello? Cell, cell, okay. Is that you can get awfully confused about, about what you're trying to do because if you're, you're too busy with, with uh, other things, jeez, oh, it's cold. If you're too busy with other things, you can uh, sometimes not be paying attention to the, to the task at hand. So please, folks, when you're driving, pay attention. Uh, the TV thing was a complete uh, departure from anything I'd done before. My brother was in radio, but uh, I'd never done any broadcast work before. Um, so it, it's, I just feel I'm the luckiest guy in, in the world to be able to do something that I love and actually get paid for it. It was one, one of the defining moments in, in my entire career. Um, and the, one of the things that amazes me about the show, I'm the newcomer. I arrived in year two. And Graham, Bill, and you have been on every show, with the exception of John Davis's Motor Week. We're the longest running automotive television show in the world. And if it, you restrict it to the same network, we're first overall. Nobody's been on the air more than, than we have. And the thing that I still am amazed about is that we can all get together in a place like this and we're still friends. And uh, to me, that's the most remarkable thing about uh, the show. But the second worst thing about those crashes, other than the fact they happened in the first place, is that the media kept referring to them as accidents. Well, to me, the word accident implies some kind of random happenstance, an act of God, something that can't be avoided. Car crashes aren't like that. Car crashes are caused by people doing something wrong, tailgating in the fog, or failing to do something right, wearing a seatbelt or taking a break after two hours. Now, words have power because they have meaning. And if we use the wrong word, it distorts the meaning. If people keep hearing that these things are accidents, they'll say, well, there's nothing I could have done. But there's always something that could have been done. So all media people, particularly traffic reporters, please stop using the A word. There's a crash on the freeway. There's a collision on the freeway there's not an accident on the freeway. It's a small thing, but maybe it's a small step towards an eventual solution. I'm Jim Kenzie. Now, governments go to great lengths to protect ourselves from ourselves, and fair enough, I guess that's part of the job. And one of the things they make car makers do is build eight kilometer an hour proof bumpers so that you can smash into a car at a reasonable fender bender speed and not break the taillights or destroy the fuel tank or whatever. And that's all well and good. But then they allow you to go to an accessory store and buy something like that. I mean, if I'm in my Miata, this thing's hitting my windshield before I get to this guy's bumper. And if a bicyclist or a motorcyclist turns past this guy and doesn't know this thing's hanging out there, they're going to get decapitated by that thing. And of course, it's fitted to a huge trailer hitch, this great massive chunk of steel down there that completely destroys the purpose of having a crash-proof bumper in the first place. It doesn't make any sense. The ones I really like, though, are the ones that put Junior on their lap. And I'm not just talking the passenger's lap here. I saw one yo-yo driving down University Avenue in downtown Toronto with his kid on his lap while he was steering the car. How do these people find the washroom in the morning? Now, some of you are saying out there, but my little Johnny's too active. He wants that still in the car seat. Well, listen, I've got four kids, age 2 through 12, and I'll stack them up against anybody's when it comes to being active. They've learned from day one, and I mean coming home from the hospital, the car doesn't move until the seat belts are done up. So remember, folks, this is the future generation of our country we're talking about here. Let's give them a chance. Petro Canada is installing electric recharging stations at a lot of their filling stations across the country. The first one happens to be in my hometown, Milton, Ontario. It's going to be nice that I can charge my electric car anytime I want, <laughs> as if. There's going to be 32 of these facilities, coast to coast, and there's going to be not one, but two charging stations at each filling station. 64 of these across the entire country. Frankly, that should be enough. But the weirdest thing about all this, for the moment anyway, the electricity is free. Now, Canada has the highest electricity charges just about in the entire world, but Petro-Canada somehow is giving it away. 
And yet 100 meters away in that same station, there's the air pump. And when you want to fill up your tires, that'll be a buck 50. What? Air costs money and electricity is free? Who's running this shop? Just the connection with, with viewers and, uh, and uh, their automobiles and their passion for the automobile, which of course we obviously share, um, that's what made, has made this uh, a career of, of, of dreams for some. I couldn't even dream of something like this. It's, it's beyond imagining. So it's been uh, just amazing. And again, it's the people. This week, I want to welcome the newest member to the Motoring TV family. You probably recognize him from another automotive TV show. Zach Spencer, welcome to Motoring TV. I only came because I love the shirts. I'm kidding, it's great to be here. I knew a Brad Diamond before motoring TV even hit the air. I used to work at the racetrack in Toronto down to the beaches, Greenwood Racetrack, and Brad used to come in with his camera crew. He used to have a horse racing show before motoring. I saw him there with the crew, the beautiful mustache <laughs> covering all the horse racing, and who would have thought all those years later I would end up working with Brad at motoring TV. There's someone hitchhiking here. It looks like, no, <laughs> kind of, kind of looked like him, but no. What would he be hitchhiking for? <laughs> it is, that's Brad. He is hitchhiking. What, what the heck is he doing? Like, where have you been? It's a long story and it's cold out there. Not that you guys from Vancouver know anything about that. I gotta go to the bathroom, okay? So we just get back to base and you close the show. Okay, um, well, that's it for this week. Make sure you watch next week where we have more stories about cars and the people that drive them. And maybe even Brad will show up. I'm behind the scenes. I keep all the guys organized. Um, it's, it's a big family affair and, you know, they say drivers are born and so is our team. The team just meshed. I think it's because of Brad. We've had worked with great editors, great cameramen. Our on-air guys are the best. The credibility is, is proven, says it for itself. TSN has been amazing and there's never a dull moment they make me laugh, and that's important. When you hear a siren, obviously you stop and look where it's coming from. Downtown, it's difficult because the sound bounces off the buildings. So if you hear the sirens, vehicles approaching, just the best thing you can do if it's safe, pull to the right if there's space. If not, just stay where you are. Number one, if people could just remember to stop, take a deep breath and try to remember to pull to the right, that would be, that would make my job so much easier, <laughs> so much easier. A lot of times people panic and then they just stop where they are, which is fine because I have to be able to see so far in advance. If everybody just remembered to pull to the right, then we would, I would have a clear lane. Well, they say all good things must come to an end. Well, I'm here to tell you, you've just seen the last episode of Motoring TV. Why, many people have asked me. Well, it's quite simple. We're not getting any younger. And I just thought it was time to retire from work as much as I've enjoyed it, but I'm not retiring from life. And I just wanna see what's around the corner. But how do I thank people that have been involved with Motoring TV for this long? First, you, our viewers. We've almost grown up together. My Motoring TV family, our sponsors, and of course, TSN, who made the journey possible. And finally, I've been in this business for over 50 years, done tons of productions. But, but thanks to Motoring TV, as I said, I've spent over three decades with some of the nicest and most talented people I've ever met in my life. Thank you. There's this connection that we've made with the motoring public. Um, stories about cars and the people that drive them. I've, I've heard that somewhere before. Um, uh, but that, that's been the essence of the show, the connection that we've made with the Canadian motoring public. I was one of the hosts of Driver's Seat. That show's gone. I was one of the hosts of Driving Television. That show's gone. And now I join Motoring TV for its final season. 
So the story here is if you want a TV show to end, you just hire me. Once in a while, I'd be going through the airport and somebody go, oh, you hired uh, trucking, yeah, motoring, you know, like, and then they go, I remember when you did that thing. You know, and they, they never tell you about the great long technical thing you talked about, but they like the little gags, right, that we pulled off. So that was good. I mean, I'd like to thank our viewers. Uh, I'd like to thank you and Isabel for 33 years of working for the great show. It was, it, it, it changed my life, it did. You know, it kicked open doors, as I said earlier, kicked open a lot of doors for me. Um, and a lot of people helped me from behind the scenes, either directly or indirectly. It has a great legacy. It was absolutely brilliant to be part of. I wouldn't change it for anything. And all I can say is to you and Isabel, the whole gang, thank you. It was fantastic. It's been, it's been huge fun, you know, working with some really good cameramen. Everybody's put it all together, so it now comes together as a neat package that um, I don't think anybody else does cars as well as motoring. Just a quick reminder that your regular host will be back next week. But in the meantime, the hell is the line? That's it for now. We'll see you next time out as we continue to bring you more stories about cars and SUVs and trucks, trucks and go-karts and the people who drive them. Boring TV! The best show on television! Don't miss it! Huh? <laughs> You're the best. Boy? Come tight. Oh, I'm leading towards the gym like this. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Oh, a little bit, because you're a good Yeah, you're too, uh, yeah. Yeah, right, you're good, good, good. You don't have to be behind this one, Brad. You don't have to be behind this Okay. Oh, and everybody's going. Here, can you see that?